Chapter 9 Brayden stays pissed off for the next hour. All he does is lean against the front counter, staring at his phone or looking at the floor with his lips pressed into a thin line. He isn't even texting. I know this because every time I glance at his phone, the screen is off. I can't even pretend to know why he's acting like this. Pissed off Brayden is not something I've ever seen before. The band plays the same song over and over again, while their diehard fans dance around for the music video as if they haven't heard the same chorus play a thousand billion times already. As long as the film crew is here, we don't have any real work to do, besides stand around the front counter and wait for this to be over. I'm sitting on the floor, my back against the wall and my head leaning against the shelf behind the counter. I feel like I should say or do something, but I don't know what. It's like there's some kind of spell over the BMX park today, and it has nothing to do with Zombie Radio's video shoot. I can pretend to be naive and act like I don't know why things are weird, but even the old Becca knows that would never work. Things are weird because Brayden was about to reveal something, something personal, something embarrassing to me. He was this freaking close to spilling his guts and telling me exactly what was bothering him. That he liked me. I know it. I know that's what he was going to say. Why else would he let me get away with calling him a nickname that he normally hates? Another thought occurs to me as I stare at Brayden's backside from my spot on the floor. What else would he let me get away with? Does he like me the way Stephen Marshall likes Katie Emmett? Would he let me borrow his clothes and lean over and take bites of his ice cream without asking? Could I change his Facebook status and become best friends with his little sister? Or does he like me the way Ian likes Bailey, where he'd like me just long enough to talk me into hooking up with him and then dump me for the next available girl? My good mood darkens when I try to picture Brayden being the same type of guy as Ian. He certainly doesn't seem like that kind of guy, at least not on the surface. His Facebook pictures are boring, and his status updates are never about girls. Not that I've been looking at his page very often or anything. Plus, he seemed extra protective of me when Dustin asked me if I were single, and every single time someone says something about me on the CNC Facebook page, Brayden basically tells them to shove it. I smile and look up at the bright blue shirt Brayden wears while he leans over the counter, staring at his phone. He definitely likes me in the Stephen Marshall way. I'm not able to bask in the enjoyment of knowing Brayden likes me very long, because as soon as I remember the incident with Dustin, I remember something else that deserves a little obsessive analyzing. Nolan Park thinks I'm cute? Ugh, never mind. I can't think about Nolan Park. He's obviously too old for me, and he doesn't even live around here since Dustin has to bribe him to come visit. I remember his infrequent logins on the computer and remind myself that he's probably the same type of guy as Ian. He's crazy hot and knows it. He probably flirts with all the girls in every town he visits. That's not the kind of guy that deserves to occupy my thoughts all day. From a few feet away, Brayden sighs and drums his fingers on the counter, keeping a beat with the drummer on stage. He stares out of the doors, looking like he'd rather be anywhere but here. Hey, I call out. He glances down at me and lifts an eyebrow, waiting for me to continue. Only, I didn't have anything planned after that initial word, so I scramble for something to say. You'd think they could just film the band pretending to play music and then add the music into the video later. Yeah, that would be a good idea. He gives me a wry smile and then turns back to the ever-important task of staring at the countertop. His profile is so freaking cute. Even if he is making this morose, sad puppy face as he absentmindedly traces shapes on the counter. The boy wears his emotions on his sleeve, and for some reason, out of my control... I want to grab him and hug him and never let him be sad again. I wonder if he feels my eyes on him. If he knows that I'm thinking about him as much as he's obviously thinking about me. Hey, I say again. Only this time I draw out the word letting him know there's something super important at the end of the sentence. It won't be like the last time I said it. Yeah? He doesn't even look over at me. Oh well, I'm not discouraged. 
Instead, I take in a deep breath and imagine that I'm sitting across the room watching this scene unfold with Bailey in my place. She would make sure to get what she wants. And so will I. Come here. I am here. You're not as here as you could be, I say patting my hand on the floor next to me. Brayden glances around as if seeking permission to leave that spot on the floor. Hurry, I whisper. I don't even know what kind of smile I have because it's the kind of smile I know I've never made before. It's sneaky. Exhilarating. Brayden grins and looks around again before closing the space between us in two steps. He drops to the floor beside me, pressing his back against the wall. He pulls his knees up and rests his arms on them. He smells like coconut shampoo and coffee. Is this better? The butterflies in my stomach feel like they have butterflies in their stomachs. And then I'm wondering if butterflies even have a stomach. And I know it's just because my mind doesn't want to stay focused on the task at hand. Summoning that endless courage I seem to get when reading an inspirational, motivational quote, I let my head fall to the right until it rests on Brayden's shoulder. He doesn't make me wait forever, wondering if he's going to return the gesture or shrug me off of him. He just tilts his head until it rests on top of mine, and just like that, the entire world feels perfect. I barely even notice the screeching music that saturates the room with its awfulness. We sit like this for a while, neither one of us speaking. I think we're both trying to figure out something to say that won't ruin the moment. I crack first. I lift my head but keep my shoulder pressed against his and look over at him. Finish telling me what you were going to say outside. I think you know what I was going to say. A grin tugs at the corner of my mouth. So say it anyway. Brayden's fingers intertwine. If I say it, things will change. So say it. He lifts an eyebrow. Do you want things to change? Duh, I smile, but his face turns serious. I didn't think you wanted that. You didn't think I wanted what? I ask, peering into his brown eyes. He swallows and stares at his hands. I nudge him with my shoulder. I wish feelings and emotions weren't so damn hard to talk about. Talk to me, I whisper. He sighs and runs his tongue over his lips. I almost throw my arms around his neck and kiss him like crazy, but, well... I'm not that bold yet. So far, words are the only weapon in my summer transformation arsenal. After another tense moment, he says, If I talk to you, then I'll change everything. I'll ruin what you want. What do you mean? How do you know what I want? You made it perfectly clear what you want, Becca, in front of me and my friend and our boss. A wince flashes across my face before I can help it. My stomach knots up, and I replay the earlier conversation in my mind. I said we were just friends, he nods. Do you want to be just friends with me, Becca? It's the moment of truth, only it's happening all wrong. He was supposed to tell me how he felt. He was supposed to take the leap, risk total embarrassment and rejection. Now it's all on me. My first reaction is to nod. Play it off like we're just friends and that's all we'll ever be. It'll be easy. It will take away all the anxiety and fear of rejection. I can say yes and this whole thing will blow over and go back to normal. But normal isn't fun. Normal doesn't make for good memories. No. The word is basically out of my mouth before Braden kisses me. It's quick but passionate. It's startling and comforting. His mouth tastes like glazed donuts and French vanilla coffee creamer. He pulls away and watches me for a reaction, but all I can do is stare at him, open-mouthed and gasping for air. His forehead leans closer, and I think he'll kiss me again, but he rests his forehead on mine instead. Say something, he whispers, as his hands slide into mine, interlacing our fingers and pulling them into his lap. I say the only thing on my mind. Do it again? He smiles and wraps a hand around my hair, pulling me into him, kissing me for the second time, and the third, and fourth. I squeeze his hands and he squeezes back, and we share an epic moment together, both hidden from view of everyone at CNC BMX Park. Brayden's lips press into mine, 
and a flurry of crazy emotions tumble through me. He smiles and I smile, and everything, everything except for a zombie radio song, is good. There's not a quote or a lyric or any words of wisdom that someone else has ever said that will fully describe this moment. I don't know the words to describe my situation as elegantly as Marilyn Monroe or with the wisdom of Shakespeare, but maybe every part of life doesn't need to be put into words. I don't need some fancy quote to tell me that this summer is a new beginning. My new beginning. And the best part? I won't be spending it alone.